So our big story starts with a couple questions. How you doing tonight? How's your day today? Are you sitting there watching and also thinking about all the little and maybe big things that are stressing you out? Your bills, your kids, maybe a disagreement you had with a family member or a neighbor? Well, tonight we're gonna take a step back from all of that and think about something bigger, much bigger. The results of a new study that take a look at the very fabric of the universe and the local scientists who played a part in a huge discovery. Here's Ashley Koch to explain. Think of the fabric of the universe like it's a blob of jello. Really firm jello. If something hits jello, it's gonna jiggle. If something big enough meets space time, the so called fabric of the universe, well, same deal. Or so the theory of gravitational waves goes. Gravitational waves are vibrations in the jello. Jeffrey Hasboon is an astrophysicist at Oregon State University. He and his students are part of a huge discovery about the way space and time move throughout the universe. Gravitational waves are ripples in the fabric of space-time. Einstein predicted them more than a century ago as part of his theory of relativity. Hasboon and another OSU professor, Javier Siemens, are part of an international collaboration of hundreds of scientists called Nanograv which is the North American Nanohertz Observatory for Gravitational Waves. So while you and I were wondering what we're going to have for dinner or analyzing our crush's latest text, the nanograph scientists were analyzing data from pulsars. Pulsars are what's left behind when massive stars die. They spin through space at regular intervals, so scientists can treat them as giant ticking clocks. They emit radio pulses, which can be picked up by radio telescopes here on Earth. So all the researchers have to do is keep an eye on those pulses and how often they arrive to see if there are any anomalies. If they arrive a little bit later or a little bit earlier, that can be evidence for a gravitational wave passing by because the length between us, the distance between us, is either extended or contracted a little bit. I'm making it sound simple, but this was a very long project. These waves are huge, light years in frequency. To really see the wave, you need to see from one peak to the next of, of the waves. And from peak to peak, they, they could be 15 years apart. So you could see one peak and have to wait 15 years to see the next peak. After analyzing 15 years worth of data from the radio telescopes, they were able to detect a symphony of gravitational waves, some with high frequencies, some with lower frequencies, a whole chorus of cosmic waves reverberating throughout the universe. Here is that pattern. This is the unique fingerprint of a background of gravitational waves, and there's nothing else we know of in the pulsars, in the intervening gas, or on Earth that can produce this pattern. So where exactly are these waves coming from? That's the next question scientists will be looking to answer, but they have an idea. The objects that we think we are seeing are supermassive black hole binaries at the centers of galaxies that are billions of times the mass of the sun. Hasbun says that this discovery is just the beginning of what we could someday learn, and it could tell us a lot about what's going on in the universe and where we all come from. So you can have predictions of things like dark energy or dark matter, big open questions that have ramifications for gravitational waves early in the universe. So these could be the reverberations of the Big Bang. I know, you've got a lot going on. There are a lot of real world concerns here on the Earth. But as you're thinking about those little things going about your night, just remember that something bigger is happening in the great beyond. Something huge and far away with ripples that come right back here to Earth. Ashley Koch, KGW News. That's incredible stuff, isn't it? So the next phase of the gravitational wave research will combine the nanograv research with other ground-based methods of detecting the waves. It's a mission between NASA and a European space agency called LISA, and it's set to fly a space-based detector sometime in the 2030s. Researchers expect that it'll allow them to see almost all of the compact black hole binaries in our galaxy. Needless to say, they're pretty excited about it.